Right, this is going to be a two hour special. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Just call me Barbara Wawa. How many workspaces have this kind of environment uh, behind this? I mean, we talk about connection conversation. This is a part of your culture. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is our, our new headquarters, our second headquarters in Vancouver, HQ2 we call it. And uh, we, you know, in our last headquarters built out kind of a West Coast Canadiana theme. This one we continued with kind of a ski hill lodge theme throughout. So uh, this is our, our lodge uh, lounge and we've got uh, a fireplace in here, a bunch of bean bags and very kind of low and fun space to, to work in. What does it take to be an entrepreneur, not only for yourself, but for these people that could potentially jump off and do something great? What is that most important characteristic? You know, entrepreneurs just love to solve problems. So they love to, to you know, I, yeah, I talk about entrepreneurship. It's one of our core values as, as our at, at our company, and um, you know when I when I say that to people, like a lot of them are like, "Well, you want me to start selling lemonade?" And it's not it's not about that. You know, entrepreneurs kind of look at um, systems and problems that are out there, pain. Like, what's what's the pain in your everyday life? And they, they want to solve it. They want to make things easier. I find with people that have accomplished great things or are building on a legacy, there's always one pivotal or defining moment. And we've chatted about this before. When it comes to the idea of conversation, can you tell us the story of when your path really changed and you were going to be the entrepreneur that you've landed today? Wow. Uh, you know, in terms of entrepreneurship, uh, it, it's, I started my first business when I was 16. It was a paintball company. Uh, and, and the conversation that led to that was probably even, even years before that. I think it was with my mom. And it was uh, saying that I needed some money to go play video games when I was in elementary school go get some quarters and play some video games. And she, she said, she wasn't going to give me the quarters. I had to go you know, earn them somehow. And so I asked her what I could do. And she said, well, she had a, she had a store. And she said, we well, can go clean the windows at the store. So she gave me a bucket and a squeegee. And a, so I went out and I cleaned the windows. And she gave me five bucks. I thought, this is amazing, because that was you know, a, lot of, a lot of money back for, in the day for me. Um, so you know, that, that was like kind of the, the first conversation that kind of got me thinking about entrepreneurship and how um, you know how great it can be for somebody to be able to just uh, do that and, and you work as hard as you want you make more money I started uh, kind of my mom nudged me to go and talk to her neighbor next door and I went and had a conversation with them and washed their windows and I just kind of realized it's you know it's mine mine to make at this point hustle at a young and early age yeah. and I think getting uh, to the top of the game is one thing but staying on top is another and you've talked about this idea of sabotage when did you learn about sabotage and avoiding that in your life and just consistently pushing forward uh, well, you know, sabotage, uh, that it's, it's an interesting one. If, for those who don't know it, look it up in Wikipedia. It's pretty cool. But basically, it's from the French, and they um, had these sandals, wooden sandals called sabots. And uh, the, uh, the people working the looms, which were this kind of like, you know, big industrial uh, chain shift in, in uh, technology, the guys that were working the hand looms didn't like this. It was threatening their jobs. So these guys had these wooden sabots, and they took off their sabots and threw them into this big industrial machine to break it, to jam up all the, all the, all the cogs. And that became the etymology of sabotage. Um, you know, I think that, that uh, resistance to change is, is a, a very hard thing. I think a lot of people see change as, as a friction. Um, but you know, in resistance to it, I think change is ultimately inevitable because you get this kind of adoption. Like if you think about, say, um, uh, technologies like cloud, based software or even even like the digitization of office when Microsoft Office came around and everybody started using an Excel it doesn't seem like a big deal but all of a sudden you get people on Excel and using Office and Outlook and all of these other other tools people were res resisting that but the people that resisted that became dinosaurs their businesses were inefficient and they ultimately went out of business and so you know I think that business is very Darwinianism at its core and you have to like always be pushing the envelope you always have to be evolving uh, and and those that don't you know they, they die so I think uh, you know in terms of in terms of evolution of business sabotage is a is a silly thing I think you need to just always be looking ahead and when you look at the message whether it's an employee whether it's a partner in your firm or a potential client I guess as a thought to sum this up, how do you approach the idea of making every conversation count? What is the most important thing for you when it comes to building meaningful relationships? 
Uh, you know, I, I think I think it's finding what you're doing and, and ultimately finding an objective, right? Like we we talk a lot about um, uh, how we put together and structure meetings because I think that meetings in, in organizations can be uh, very valuable or they can be a huge waste of time, and so you know one of the things that we do is we, we talk about each meeting having a goal which just seems like so common sense but often people will call a meeting and everybody kind of gets there and is like alright so what's the goal and, and sometimes people just don't have one it's been forgotten and so like having that clearly up front so understanding what your goals of communication are uh, and then you're tracking for your outcome like what, what is the outcome out of the, out of the meeting out of the conversation um, you, you have to take something away with it otherwise it's a waste of time right so uh, kind of thinking about what you're going to be doing out of this meeting the outcome of it and then ultimately some way to close the loop tracking down to see if the, if the outcome happened and if you need to have you know a, a repeat on this or if, or if it's ultimately been resolved right so I think that applies to, to kind of all levels of communication whether it's a meeting a conversation or you know an interview it's how to build a relationship great yeah. words from the man Ryan thanks right. for doing this man yeah you bet thanks a lot Hey, it's Riaz. Thanks for watching. For more conversations, click on subscribe and check us out online at everyconversationcounts.com. Well, Alfred's a good man, so you know, I know this is gonna, you know, there's gonna be some dangerous stuff, so Alfred's gonna take that. So, <laughs> look alike. I'll tell you when I saw this.